If you think math and humanities are nothing like each other, you're probably right. However, I don't really like doing math conventionally, so today I'll be talking about essays as a mathematical function. Typically, an essay hinges on a thesis, a core argument, and an essay is supposed to explore the idea using evidence and analysis to convince its reader, kind of like what I'm doing here. This gives us a starting point and end point for our function, for maybe how convinced you are. And maybe the function has a different starting and end point depending on the viewer, but that's fine. Functions can be grouped together into classes. Exactly what the function is might not be as important so long as we can understand its general properties. Anyways, continuing on, an essay only captured a small portion of maybe a larger world of ideas, so that narrows down a large amount of possible functions into a narrower subset. So now we need to represent this on a graph. There are many metrics that you could put on the axes, but for now let's just put how convinced you are on the y-axis, and on the x-axis let's just put the position in the video, or time. There are definitely more categories that you can work through, like specificity, maybe logic, other things that essay enthusiasts might know more about, and maybe you can imagine more categories, but for now let's stick to a simple 2D graph. So now let's move on to the actual essay. When writing an essay, you want to organize it so that it follows a logical flow. Dare I call it Continuous? I mean, maybe there's a specific moment that pushes you to an epiphany, but it should be steady throughout. In the case of how convinced you are that mathematical functions and essays are similar, I'll just hope that my function is increasing, but we could also consider a different y-axis of maybe some logical point. Exactly how that gets captured might be a little ambiguous, but if your essay isn't continuous, then your logic flow will jump around rather than flow smoothly. And this is a problem we may want to fix, which we can maybe do by putting some space between two parts of a function, and then connecting it so that the function is continuous, filling it in with some kind of transition for the audience. Now that I've mentioned continuity, maybe we can go on to looking at slopes and derivatives. Having a greater slope might indicate drawing hastier conclusions or bringing together completely unrelated topics. Instead, we probably want to more slowly develop ideas over a larger essay. If we want our essay to resonate with readers better, it might also be a good idea to give them hints as to the main argument we make. In a way, this additional foreshadowing can be hinted at in the derivative, indicating maybe how fast or slow we want to progress with our argument. Now that I've created a comparison between developing ideas and function continuity, let's take a small step back and put this back into perspective. Here, I'm using these very specific points to show how essays can be like mathematical functions, but there are many types of mathematical functions and many styles of essay writing. In the end, both function classes and essay structures are very vague. There are many routes to take given a specific essay prompt, like how there are many different functions that can follow specific criteria. And if this all sounds like complete nonsense, let me try to give you a good concluding example. Maybe you're looking for a function that passes through these three points. I could give you a ton of functions that passes through these points, but they're not all necessarily good. Maybe you're trying to capture some kind of relation between hours spent doing math and time spent doing humanities. It doesn't really make sense for this graph to ever go negative, yet if you want functions that take in positive values only, you can still find a plethora of functions that fail horribly, having absurd oscillations to negative numbers. And in the humanities and specifically essay writing, I think this can be something very frustrating. You don't just have a 2D graph that's easy to visualize, but there could be so much more. Your function might be great for the criteria you check, but there could be another one that destroys you. So if you like one of the humanities and math but can't do the other, try to figure out what exactly challenges you about the subject. I talked today about how there is a function fitting problem in math similar to writing an essay, but there are definitely other skills that can translate between the two. At the end of the day, learning is about creating your set of tools to tackle the problems you want to solve. And for me, maybe that means I use my mathematical hammer a little too much, but I like to think my small set of tools can still be diverse.